It's time for Joy in the Journey. Hi there, welcome to Joy in the Journey. I'm glad you took a moment to tune into the program today. I'm Beth Davis, I'll be your host for the next 30 minutes with whatever the Holy Spirit is up to. And I just heard somebody say, what's this Holy Spirit? Well, that's another program, but the Holy Spirit is sent when you give your life to the Lord and you accept that gift of eternal life for the price of Jesus Christ, God's only son who died for us so that we don't have to pay the price of what we so deserve. He left this earth and was uh, resurrected seated in heaven and he sent the helper the holy spirit which resides in you now if you're a born again believer he leads you he guides you he helps you every single day and that's what i'm talking about so thank you for being here and uh, take a look at our uh, uh, our youtube channel we'd like to send you there um, you just go on youtube.com and look for joy in the journey and all the programs are just lined up in there for you to go down through just take your little scroller there and scroll down through and let the holy spirit minister you and and let you know like when one will flag out, you know, you'll just all of a sudden one will just pop up. That's Holy Spirit saying, you need to watch this. This will help you, this will minister to you. And then just play it. And while you're there on our YouTube channel, if you'd be so kind as to subscribe, that would help us tremendously and we would appreciate that. And how you do that, there's a little bell up there on the top and you just, or maybe just a little button, it's all different sometimes, it just says subscribe. I promise you we aren't gonna send you anything. Some people get afraid about doing things like that. Don't be afraid. It just lets you know when we upload new programs. That's for your benefit. So thank you for that. It does help us though as, as well. So with that, I'm gonna introduce our guest today. I have two guests today. This is gonna be an awesome program. And I can't wait to get into what, what uh, the Holy Spirit has for us today. So we're gonna just turn this way and we're gonna say thank you, Sandra Tuscan, and thank you, Michelle Nichols for being here. God is up to something. Amen. 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 And you've come all the way from? North Ridgeville. Okay. Yeah. Lorraine yeah. County. Oh, is that like close to Illyria? Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yes. kind of like Illyria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's like when people say Worcester or they could say like Apple Creek or Fredericksburg, it's Worcester. You know, yeah. but those are just those right. little. Right. It's just yeah. outside of Cleveland. Okay. Just West to side, the left. Yeah. yeah. To the left. Go to Cleveland. Not far to the from left. the lake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, God put you guys, or the Holy Spirit put you on my heart, you know, way back when. And, you know, um, for whatever reason, we weren't able to, to do, record the program a while back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just timing. I know you both know what I mean when, there's, when I talk about the Holy Spirit's timing and everything. Yeah. Yes, the enemy comes to kill and steal and destroy, and he doesn't like anything to do with helping people yeah. or loving God or, you know, through recovery ministry. And that's what this program is going to be about today is recovery yeah. and restoration in, in the lives of God's people. So I don't know, you know, if that was, um, you know, the Holy Spirit saying, no, that's just not time yet, or the devil came to try to just stop it, you know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter because you're here today. Yeah. Amen. And we're going to do part one, and we're going to do part two if you stick around. <laughs> Amen. Um, so I'd like to hear, uh, let's start with you, Sandra, okay? Um, and I want to, you just do whatever the Holy Spirit leads you. There's no scripting in Joy in the Journey Okay. Here. Holy Spirit <laughs> is your scripter. He'll give it to you as you go. Um, Amen. Maybe you can even share how, you know, that little bit we were talking about how you met Michelle. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she can go into a little more in depth, you know, of what, you know, her testimony may be. And maybe you want to share part of a testimony. Yeah. Because that's really the starting point of how you got into what you are now. Because mm -hmm. you come out of, and then God says, okay, now time to get to work. Yeah. Let me use you. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Well, I do want to start a little bit with my own uh, because I do have an addiction uh, background. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm 52 this year, uh, and I've been free from uh, the addictions uh, for over 20, 30, wow. almost 25 years, Thank really. Thank you, Lord. Um, but I went through it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when I was in my early 20s, I was walking the streets of Las Vegas, oh sticking needles in my arm, and a meth addict. Oh um, I was miserable and void of any hope. Mm -hmm. And I can remember a specific time when the enemy spoke to me and said, the only reason it you have pain left in you is because you hope that it will get different oh. it will be different and i i bought that lie mm -hmm. i i bit off that apple mm -hmm. and went you know what that makes sense to me and if i give up i hope that it'll get better i'll just it'll everything will be okay and you know it was at that moment that life really ceased any sort of joy mm -hmm. any sort of um it just ceased mm -hmm. and God did have to intervene and thank yes, God he thank did oh. um, and um, you know for each of us it's different how we come to know him but mm -hmm. he started me uh, you know in a journey of uh, I, I actually ended up pregnant and I think he knew at that time 
the only thing that I would live for would be something outside of myself, but it had to be within me. Mm -hmm. I know, he does that with kids sometimes. <laughs> so we, yeah, he does. He and does. so that began a journey toward him. Awesome. It was a number of years before I actually had an, an encounter and really came to know him. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, through that, I was able to overcome the addiction I was able to get healed from trauma. Mm, yes. I was able to, um, you know, overcome strong um, things like rejection mm. and unworthiness, um, and find my identity mm -hmm. and who I was truly created to be mm -hmm. through trial and tribulation and oh, adversity my. and um, and and clinging to. Uh, the truth and finding the truth, seeking the truth. And so here, you know, I got had arrived to this place where my heart was to help others come mm -hmm. into the truth mm -hmm. because it, it freed me from so much oh, depression, I, went through suicide oh, and wow. self-sabotage oh, and I just, know. Mm. you know, just, oh, it was terrible. Even as a believer. I know. You know, become, you know, coming to Christ is one thing, but then overcoming the past yes. life is a yes. whole nother and that <laughs> journey. I'm just, because I can relate. Yes. You know? And that was a challenge. <clears throat> and yet when, the, when I look back, it has given me all the things that I need mm -hmm. to be able to minister out yes. the truth. Yes. <laughs> That, you know? He uses every bit of it, and it's like I have a wellspring of Him within me. Oh, you do with the yeah. Holy Spirit, oh. and I can come upon any circumstance and say, "I have something for you." The mm -hmm. Holy Spirit has something to draw out of me mm -hmm. to give you mm -hmm. and impart to you and help you along in your oh, journey. Oh my goodness! You know, wow. Um, so mm -hmm. that that was one of the places that um, started my relationship with Michelle was mm -hmm. a place where I was positioned within my church mm -hmm. and the ministry and I had this draw, this desire. Um, it was at the height of the epidemic of heroin. Mm -hmm. The news was just um, terrible. We were, we were hearing it's an epidemic of um, of heroin, it's an epidemic, and mm -hmm. even we as believers, uh, I had lost our hope in this situation. Yes, and I felt like I heard the Lord saying to me, "Hey, wait a minute, I'm a greater epidemic. Yes, you need to remind yourself and other yes. people that I am greater." Yes, and I grabbed a hold of that awesome. and felt compelled to go out, mm -hmm. and um, I I did. I we had a brand new sober uh, sober living home. Mm -hmm. um, Three quarter house, I bet, I think mm -hmm. is what it was at the mm -hmm. time, and uh, it was brand new. And so I called the house director there and said, "Would there be room for me to come in mm -hmm. and just talk to whoever wanted to sit mm -hmm. down and talk to me around the Bible?" Amen. And Michelle was at the table with me, uh, along with three other women. Mm -hmm. uh, and boy, that was an encounter. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. <laughs> but um, I, I often recount that moment as one where I had a bit of a, I was a bit a chip on my shoulder because mm -hmm. I was going alone, yes. and I wanted so many people to come with me. I wanted a partner to go with me, and I'm I was sure. a bit like, Lord, why am I here by myself? The mm -hmm. whole church should be here. I know. And um, when I got there, I realized. Um, through the encounter that I had with Michelle and the Holy Spirit, he said, you know what? I've got a partner for you, <laughs> and here she is. And she was brilliant even in that. And I was like, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that because she has got the teach, the preach, the fire. Uh, she is that fire-branded next generation that is coming up with an anointing and a fervency to bring a lot of people out mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the bondages mm -hmm. of addiction. And mm -hmm. so I can't wait for you to hear her testimony. Yeah, well, cause when you were saying that, great. I just heard the Lord say, or the Holy Spirit, which are, how are you want to, you know, I, the Holy Spirit, he's, that's what I call him, the Holy Spirit, because that's who's with me all the yeah. time, and that's whose voice I hear. But I heard him say, when you were talking about that with the church, and like, the whole church should be here. The Lord's like, I don't have anybody available in the church right yeah. there. Availability. But I've got one it? coming. Yes. You know, yes. but there is none available. Right. You know, and that's, yeah. the, that's the sad truth. But Well, and we have to reconcile that, right, mm -hmm. and go yes. anyway. Go. And go anyway, and then there, there's the provision. Yes. He's like, I saw that, you know, and I have, I have provision for you. Mm -hmm. That's and, right. Um, and realize that we are never alone, that he is partnering yes, with us. Yes. And, um, and, and greater is he that is in us. Yes. Um, and so. But I heard your heart when you said that, because it's like, come on, you know, because mm -hmm. you want everybody else to have that same <laughs> you you know, fervency and just that passion, you know, and come on, we have, we got something to do here. We, yes. We got work to do, you know. Yeah. But yeah. you just have to trust the Holy Spirit and just go with it. We do. Mm -hmm. And then look what happens. He yes. always uh, outshines it. He yes. always comes up 
you know, in right. a greater way than you could expect. Yes. And um, so that was how many years ago now? Six. Six, six years ago. Six, you, you met her six years ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. And we have had an incredible journey together. Wow. Um, incredible. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. That's so it's been awesome. a lot of fun. We've been taking out the devil left and right when oh, it comes to addiction it. and, oh, you know, it. and raising women and, mm -hmm. and men even mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. up and uh, really trying to impart and teach and preach and pray and anoint and, you know, yes. just all that the all that the kingdom has to offer. There's no holding back. Mm -mm. And um, we've seen some huge success stories yeah. mm -hmm. and fought some great fights. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think there's some joy in that. Yes. Right? When you fought some fights and yeah. you realize, hey, we're on the winning side. That's and, it. You know, yeah. you, you may come at me, but I've got one that is showing me how to do this. Yes. And we always come out yeah. ahead. So it's fun. fun to get up every morning and say, yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. We, I'm ready to take on this day. Mm -hmm. And no two days are the same. That's right. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always wake up and say, use me today, Lord, to advance your kingdom. Yeah. Use me to advance yes. your kingdom, however yeah. that is. But I know we are. he is raising up a new team here for to re relaunch the recovery ministry here because 2020 kind of shot everything down. It tried, mm -hmm. right? You know, <laughs> it, it did here for a while. It did. You know, because yeah. you know, you're not allowed to be it with anybody, you know, and you're yeah. not allowed to, you have to stand six feet apart. Well, how do you stay six feet apart when you're supposed to be together, you yeah. know? But he is, he is relaunching it, you know, he's just in the very beginning stages here, so. Yeah. And there is, right now, the core team that he's building has women, but he did give me three more people and there is one man, yeah. you know? Okay. But there's a lot of things yeah. he has to, he hopped over. Well, overcome. you know, the team is so important. It um, is. I think back at that time, you know, we're part of Cathedral of Life Ministries in North Richville. We mm -hmm. have a, just a beautiful pastor uh, and his wife, Lorraine, Mike, and uh, Lorraine Payne. Yes, yes. Uh, and they have the, they had the heart and the vision, yeah, um, awesome. you know, for the ministry. Yeah. Um, their daughter, Sandra, uh, Payne Miller, mm -hmm. uh, also a heart for it. We had yeah. uh, members of our church who had a heart because they had been affected so greatly. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and so along came um, um, a curriculum and, um, oh, Clean, Sober, Saved, yeah. Daryl and Tracy Strawberry. Yes, yes. And they put in our hands a tool yes, uh, to help did. us come together as a team mm -hmm. and come around something and learn the principles of what we needed to know on how to actually pull together a, a strong teaching mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. mm, atmosphere yes. that we could work with men and yes. women who from a week to week basis yes. and just work all that out. And so I think a couple of years of just really just uh, working within that curriculum mm -hmm. and learning it and getting mm -hmm. it inside of us and letting the Holy Spirit mm, create an, uh, an expertise in us mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a great tool. It it's is. It's a great tool. Don, yeah. I believe when they were here and, and back when we were doing the initial um, recovery and ours here is called Life Restoration Ministry, LRM. Um, and Daryl and Tracy were here. And I know Tracy had said that the Holy Spirit gave her that curriculum. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she just penned it all down. Yes. You know, so that yeah. was inspired and written by the Holy Spirit. Yes. And yeah. I love it. It's very, it's very good tool. It's, Do you use the other one? I mean, that, the, the Clean, Sober, and Saved is for the, the, uh, those that are struggling with life controlling issues, whatever yeah. that is. Mm -hmm. Do you use the one that's called Family and Friends? It's for the people that live with people that, have you ever used that one? We haven't looked at it, but okay. we have not um, necessarily used it. Okay. Um, although we do minister to a lot of family members, yeah. it's um, we've not used up formally. Yeah. No. Um, but uh, COVID did change things for us quite a bit uh, as well too. And, um, and over time, um, you know, there was a sort of a rebirthing of the ministry, mm -hmm. uh, and it's now it's now called Raising Hope. Raising Hope, um, mm -hmm. and Hope stands for helping other people elevate. Yes. So Thank you, you know, it is a mission to help other people elevate mm -hmm. out of addiction or any stronghold that they mm -hmm. might be facing. Mm -hmm. so, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, he's telling me we need to take a break. Okay. Break. So we're going to give you a chance to talk too when we come back. So. <laughs> Uh, don't go anywhere. We're just going to take a very <laughs> short break, and we'll be right back. All right. Hello, I'm Pastor Jerry O'Brien, Senior Pastor of Faith Harvest Fellowship, located at 9464 East Lincoln Way, Orville, Ohio, 44667. Uh, we are a uh, spirit-filled church, non-denominational. 
We want to invite you to come and visit us sometime on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock uh, or Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock and fellowship with us. If you're looking for a church home, we would love to be your family. So come and see us. Godspeed. All right, we're back here with you. Thanks for coming back. Um, with Sandra and uh, Michelle here with me today, and we're talking about life restoration or life recovery or um, uh, moving past those things like addictions that the enemy tries to keep you stuck in and how the Lord has used you both as he has pulled you both out, mm -hmm. you know, of your own, you know, and I know you mentioned a couple of things there prior to the first half. Um, for those you just turn, tuning in, um, yeah, you, you mentioned some of the things that come along with some of the things that drive us to those addictions like depression and suicide, you know, those are all strong, you know, under strong men and strongholds that come up, come up on us. Because mm -hmm. um, I know I battled from the get-go early in my life, you know, with depression and strong men that I didn't even know that were strong men, right. <laughs> you know, until right. you learn these things. Mm -hmm. Right. But you said a very good point there earlier, Sandra, how, um, because we kind of think it's just all this wasted time and all this wasted stuff that we went through. And God's like, mm, no, he's greater and higher than any of that stuff that we experienced. Yeah. Could have stopped it at any time, yeah. but he desires to pack it all together mm -hmm. because then you become such a, a great tool with the Holy Spirit and all that experience packed in there with it. Mm -hmm. Boom, you know, yeah. helps set people free. Yes, deliver absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And deliverance is a big part of the ministry of addiction. It just is, it is. you know, it just really is. It's True. coming to a truth and binding the lie, yes. coming to a truth, and uh, and receiving the power of the Holy Ghost to come upon you to deliver you from it. That's you the, know that's yeah. the key. Mm -hmm. The power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Yeah. The power of the Holy Spirit. It is. It, it talks all about it in Acts it, right. <laughs> chapter two. <laughs> it's true. That they come in there and Jesus told them to sit around and wait, you know, and they needed mm -hmm. to get that power of the Holy Spirit come upon them and come mm -hmm. in them, you know. And He said, "Go there and wait." Yep. Didn't he say, yeah. go there and wait, go there yeah. and tarry, wait. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we become born again, I believe, you know, we are, the Holy Spirit comes and lives in us. Mm -hmm. But I believe there is a separate experience, which some people don't understand it, um, that you receive that power of the Holy Spirit. You do. You know, and it's, it's, it's written right there in Acts. It you is, know? yeah. But the church doesn't do a very good job. Well, there's, there's a generation wait, waiting for the demonstration of it, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Where, where is the joy? Where? Where is the freedom? Where? Where is the testimony? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and, and I, I think there's just room, and that's why I so appreciate a platform like this. Mm -hmm. I appreciate yeah. a, a pastor who will allow for testimony, yes. you know, in a service that, um, yes. you know, allow for the, uh, the action of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to demonstrate yes. his signs and his wonders yes. among us. Yes. Um, so that those who don't believe, <laughs> can see there's a power greater than us working in the midst of this mm -hmm. and understand that that is God yes. um, and his love for us giving yes. giving us freedom. Yeah, you know? that's why those signs and wonders should be following us, right? Yes, yes. If we're operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. then they should be our partners. Yes. They should be right there with us. Yeah. You know, so I don't see a lot of them around too much. You yeah. know, where are they? You know, because we're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, Paul said to Timothy, stir those things up. Yes. You know, and I, every Sunday our pastors are doing a pretty good job of trying good. to stir up, good. you know, in us. But it is up to us to it live is. a life it that is. is truly stirred up <clears throat> in the Holy Spirit so it that is. we are a living, walking, talking Mm -hmm. uh, evidence yes. of the spirit. And, Amen. um, and I think joy for me, and that's why I love the name of this, um, program is because joy is one of those things that came to me last. It was the last thing I got mm. back. Um, but it came back full force <laughs> and it is great to live in an expressed joy, Yes, yeah. expressed yeah. joy. Yes. Uh, we, we get joy, but mm -hmm. to be able to be free to express it mm -hmm. today, you can, we go out in community and there is not expressed joy. No. Um, and when you can come in there and truly have it mm -hmm. and it's not forced, it's not, yes, you know, it's just there. It's just there. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love yeah. going places and I just love it as it permeates all around mm -hmm. you as you walk through a place, yes. you know, it, and you just know that, you know, that it's, it's hitting them and it's hitting them it and is. it's hitting them whether they want it or not. Yeah, and so there fun. goes that seed, there goes that seed, you yeah. know, and it's just popping them up, you know, like Paul with the handkerchiefs and stuff, you know, they prayed yeah. over them. I just believe it, you know, if it's in there that it just kind of gets deposited on everybody in the atmosphere. And then if you're so <laughs> blessed at something, the, Lord, the Holy Spirit says, well, go over there, you know, and you don't even know what go over there means, but you just go, go over there yeah. and it turns into something, you know. It's like Peter in a shadow, yeah. you know, he just walked by. And yeah, were, well, that's you know. what I believe, you know. Healed. And yeah. sometimes you don't get very much back, you know, you're just so full okay. of it and you just, you know, and, and people are like, hmm. 
sometimes you get growled at. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> you tell it. I know. I know. I know. It. Yeah, because the enemy's out there, and the things that we can't see that um, keep people trapped. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And held. You know, the, the strong men. I like to call them strong men or strongholds, mm -hmm. whichever mm -hmm. one you want to call it. Yeah. And I have a favorite list that um, it's from so long ago, back when we were at a different building, Nold Avenue in Worcester, and. I had taught, and I don't even remember how I even taught back then because I didn't know that I had any ability to do anything like that. But I had held on to this list, and it's a whole list of strongholds. And it's really, I love it because it has a list of the strongholds, but then underneath the list, it'll have a list of things that you can relate to. Yeah. If you don't really relate to the name of the strong man, you know, like the one will have like maybe fear, depression, suicide, but I forget what the name of the stronghold is right now. I should have brought my list with me. You know, and then people are like, oh, yeah, I'm dealing with that a lot, you yes. know. And then yeah. say, Holy Spirit, am I dealing with a strong man here, you yeah. know, yeah. that I need to renounce and get, right. get you know, out. booted out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So oh, that's good news. good stuff. It is good, good news. news, right? So I know you're just begging to talk she over is. there. She's so <laughs> full. She can't talk. But, you know, I know we're going to spill into the end of the program as you get started here, but that's why we're going to have you hang around, do part two. All right. So we'll just get you going, and, and then we'll bring Reverend Sue back onto the second program and we'll do part two and just let you go away at it. Sure. So let's find out. We, we found out how you guys met, but so let's some, just. Yeah, some testimony. So yeah. it was six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that I had entered into that halfway house, three quarter house, sober living facility um, is because I was charged and convicted with bank robbery. Mm -hmm. I had been an addict, heroin, fentanyl, mm -hmm. um, all the things really for 26 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I had started drinking and using drugs and alcohol as a coping mechanism as we young do. as 10 years old. Yeah. And that was my life and all wow. of the crime and all of the lifestyle that goes along with that. Wow. So that was where I was coming out of. Um, 10 years I was, old, huh? Uh, yeah, 10, 10 years, years old. old. And I was a suburban kid. I wow. mean, I was born and raised in a upper middle class, wealthy suburb. This was not inner city. Mm -hmm. These are our regular children out there that are being exposed. Mm -hmm. And it's just parents' liquor cabinets. Uh, it's just a bottle of pain pills um, from dad's that, that are there, back. you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's all different demographic, socioeconomical backgrounds. It really mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Um, addiction is no respecter of persons. No, it's not. Uh, yeah. It's available for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and because especially back then, I mean, you're talking in the late 80s, early 90s, there really wasn't much communication mm -hmm. about addiction, mm -hmm. about right. alcoholism. Right. Um, so kids would just do yeah. what kids do. Yeah. Um, so we're really, I think we're, we're doing our best to take a stance and mm -hmm. lift a stigma and talk about these things with the next generation. Yes. Yes. We had the youth group last night, a part of our recovery ministry. Awesome. So let's great. involve the teenagers. Yes. Yes. Let's let them see and hear the stories and, and, and let them see us celebrate bouts of sobriety. Yes. So our teenagers had a chance to That's do that awesome. last night. My teenage daughter prayed the service in. Awesome. Uh, it was hard not to cry I at bet. that. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. But um, yeah, well, back when we met, I was brand new. I was radically mm. saved in a county jail. My children had been taken into state custody. Oh, My husband was arrested and on the other side of the jail. It was an absolute brokenness mm -hmm. um, that really can't even be explained yeah. it, with English words. It really can't. But mm. um, I hit my knees. Mm -hmm. There was a woman in there who told me, you better hit your knees. Wow. And I did. A groaning came Ooh, from my body. Wow. I did not know God. Mm -hmm. Anything that I thought I knew about God, the common knowledge God, mm -hmm. it ended up all being wrong. Mm -hmm. I thought he was punishing. I thought yes. his people were judgmental. Yes. I thought that they all hated each other and me. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the stigma that the church yes. has, even yes. still to this day, yes. which again You're is right. another thing we're trying to right, right. reform mm -hmm. and um, clear up. Uh, so Holy Spirit hit me. God is in jails. God mm. is in institutions yes. and facilities just waiting for the broken person yes. to just surrender. Ooh. So Ooh. I had this miraculous surrender moment. My burden was lightened, mm -hmm. just as the word promises. Yes. Uh, miracles started to take place awesome. in my life right away. It was immediate. I was released from jail. Mm -hmm. Now I've been charged with bank robbery. Yes. Bank robbers do not get out of jail, no. but I was. 
the Lord released me to another place mm -hmm. where he had people waiting for me. Um, and that was a lockdown facility in Cleveland. And there was a woman waiting there who ran the chapel mm -hmm. who had me begin teaching Bible study. Awesome. Right then and there. <laughs> like weeks. He doesn't call the qualified, does he? He just right. qualifies you. I said, I know nothing about your Bible, <laughs> but I'll try. And she pointed to me where in the word it says there's pastors and preachers and yes, teachers yes, and yes. prophets and apostles. And she said, and you're a teacher. Awesome. And I held on to that word and yeah. God continued to provide people. When mm -hmm. I got to the next place, mm -hmm. Sandra was the <laughs> people that he provided for me to start to explain what in the world was happening yeah. because yes. I did experience joy for the first time. Yes. I experienced love for yes. the first time. Yes. And here's my friend Aww. being able to explain, Aww. this is the Lord. This oh, is yeah. what love he it. gives us, taste and see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's walked this journey oh, out with me since then, six I years. It. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. I can just feel the Holy Spirit all over both of you guys. I was getting chills there with the one thing you said. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so alive, mm -hmm. so full. And I remember being up there years ago yeah. when we were in the midst of training churches and, and working with Daryl and Tracy Strawberry and um, going out to help them know how they can just start recovery ministries. We need, all churches need, mm -hmm. really that's what church is about, right? right. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be alcohol, it doesn't have to be drugs. Yeah. It can be any life controlling issue. And that's what I liked about it, you right. know, yeah. is that we just really drove that home. And yeah. we, we had uh, used some other materials from another organization along with Daryl and Tracy's um, uh, so it could be anything and it was it was difficult we never really had a lot of people in the facility in our churches that came to the groups because people would have to identify with uh, maybe they had a stronghold of anger maybe they had a stronghold of, of, of grief that they were dealing with and they didn't want anybody to know for some reason or fear fear was one of them um, you know there's a whole bunch of them I can't remember all yeah. of them right now but pornography was one of them people didn't want anybody to know well if you don't want us to be set free then you just keep sitting on it keep walking mm -hmm. with it keep keep mm -hmm. it in your pocket yeah or you can just yeah. let it go mm -hmm. you well, know the really cool thing is that um michelle um very quickly rose up out of out of her addiction got her identity mm -hmm. uh and started walking in her calling uh, and became a director of a women's recovery house. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So there's a built-in audience, basically, yes. a rotating yes. audience of mm -hmm. people that come in. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's like, you know, uh, they were already there. Yeah. They were they were already brought. Like the Lord's like, I've got you, I've got you here, wow. and I'm just going to start yeah. bringing them to you. Wow. Uh, and so they do, they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's truly the ministry of reconciliation. It is. That's mm -hmm. what it is. It is. It doesn't matter what brokenness you've come from. It doesn't matter. It, it, God is looking to reconcile right. with mm -hmm. you. And, and that's where the number one part is, is that if they can come into, I was talking to pastor about this, our senior pastor, Jerry O'Brien, the other day. And, and I know Jim's telling us we're almost winding down. So I'm going to try to talk real fast here before we close off the program, yeah. <laughs> which I do real well. Yeah. I think I had an <laughs> yeah. auctioneer calling on my life somewhere along the line. And who knows, maybe <laughs> yeah. I will be. Um, but I do talk fast. And I don't even drink a lot of caffeine or, or I don't do drugs, you know, for goodness sake. So I don't know why I have the ability to talk so fast. But sometimes it's not good because you need to talk slower so people can hear you. But anyway, uh, we were talking about it. And, and he said that really you can't do any recovery ministry if you don't first deal with what you need to deal with. The people mm -hmm. need to know about Jesus and they need to be saved, mm -hmm. you know, and have that step first. That's step right. one. Yes. And right. once you dealt with that, then, okay, let's start talking about yeah. the recovery part. Anything's possible. Yeah. yeah. Get it done. Amen. Get it done. <laughs> yeah. You know. Just give them Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Just give them Jesus. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there's, I see, I've seen um, different programs here and the lady that's connecting with us with the sex trafficking, you know, she ministered here on the program one day with a, a lady that came out, you mm -hmm. know, and the Lord changed her name on that program, yeah. you know, which was amazing. But I just saw Jesus the whole time she's sitting there telling her story of how this lady you know, was Jesus to her. And it just gave me goosebumps because she showed, she truly showed Jesus to her. Yeah. Right. You know, she didn't judge her. She didn't tell her, mm -hmm. you can't do it this way. You got to come that way. You got to look this way. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is, this is the rules. You know, she just <laughs> said, here we are. We, we want to help you. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to love you and just come. Yeah. yeah. Just come. And that's yeah. what church is supposed to be. You know, just come. Yeah. yeah. Just come. God's going to clean you up and take care of all that junk. Yeah. yeah. Amen. So, Amen. We're out of time. But we're going to do part two, okay? Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. so thank you for being here. Yeah, and absolutely. thank you most of all for being here and being a part of this. God's going to do something in your life. I, I just know the people that have watched yeah. the program today and all those people that will watch it are going to be set free from something that's been 
uh, keeping you in bondage for a long time. So thanks for spending this half hour with us here on Join the Journey. You want to stick around and wait because we're going to do another part with these ladies. You're going to have to look for both of them uh, on the YouTube channel. So come back and see us real soon. Bye-bye.